Hey everybody, Sean Seymour here with another helpful photography tutorial. I'm gonna talk about my Lightroom workflow. Last year I did 198 shoots. Woo! Over 112,000 images. I was able to keep track of them all. I was able to back them up. And years later, I can go right to that image folder and find those images. Are you ready to learn how I did this? Let's get started. To start out, I'm gonna to have to get a little bit technical. This tutorial is gonna be a little long, but I've gotta cover some of these basics or you're gonna get lost. First thing I wanna talk about is, if you haven't been on this channel before and you find this tutorial helpful, please click the like button. That tells YouTube that other people should see it. Also, if you wanna see some more of my tutorials, subscribe to this channel and or hit the bell notification down below and you'll get a notification anytime we put out new tutorials. I'm gonna cover hard drives, what hard drives to use. I'm gonna cover SSD drives and where to use those. If this is review, please go ahead and skip ahead to where I start importing photos. But to start out, I've gotta explain some of the basics so that you don't spend a bunch of money buying things that you don't need. Then I'm gonna show you how I import and what my file structure is, my naming scheme and everything else, how I import images into Lightroom. And then I'm gonna show you how I remap what's in Lightroom to a backup drive so that I can pull that backup drive out of my dock and store it. If I ever need to come back to those files, I put my backup drive in, double click on my Lightroom folder, and it's ready to go as if I had been working on it just yesterday. In order to back up in mass quantity, you're gonna wanna get yourself a hard drive dock. This is a two bay hard drive dock from, from Rockstore. It's a USB-C connection, so it's really fast, 10 gigabytes a second, and it's going to allow you to put in things like hard drives and SSD drives, both of which are necessary in what we're gonna talk about. Quick little disclaimer, I am switching over from SSD drives in a dock to these little guys which are super fast and have a USB-C connection as well. Plus, anytime I want to travel, rather than all of the other stuff that I used to bring, like this case, this dock, two of these hard drives, two of these SSD drives, right? Try to get all of this in one place. <laughs> It's not easy. All of that is going away. There you go, two of these when I travel. The hell is that? Anyway, you're gonna need a dock, which I'll put in the link below. You're gonna need a hard drive, a spinning hard drive. This particular hard drive is three terabytes, but my actual backup hard drives are six terabytes, and I store two years of data on one drive. Then I copy that drive so that I have redundancy in my backups. One of those stays in the studio and one of those goes home with me. This allows you to essentially have unlimited capacity because you can pull these out, put another one in, and you can buy hard drives. These things are cheap, $165 for the six terabyte version. I'll put a link in the description below. And then these are the guys that are a little bit more expensive, the SSD drives. They're a lot faster though. This is my typical setup right here. I have an SSD drive, which is my working library. This is much faster. I'm gonna show you a screenshot real quick of the drive speed. So you'll see that this drive here is anywhere between three and a half to five times faster than these old spinning hard drives. However, there is a cost trade-off, a cost speed trade-off. This drive right here, while it's faster, has smaller capacity, there's only two terabytes, and I think I paid $450 for this drive. These, I got two six terabyte drives. They last me for two years. One is my backup and one's my redundant backup. Anyway, I got those for $350, $165 each-ish. Okay, so what I do is, and what we'll explain in this video is, my working library, which needs to be the fastest it can possibly be so that my editing is really quick, goes on my SSD drive, and then when I'm ready to back things up, it goes right here to the spinning hard drive. All right, I'm glad we got through that. Let's go ahead and get back to the studio where I can show you some screenshots of how I do my imports. Okay, so I'm back in the studio, and one of the things that I wanna explain is how I organize my hard drives, my SSD drive, 
my folders and my image files. Without this, the rest of the tutorial is pretty much worthless. Things I'm going to show you is how you can remap your backup drive so that you can just simply double click your Lightroom file and it will open up everything and look at your backup as your working library. Okay, so back to the structure. I have an SSD drive over here on Photos 2TB. It happens to be two terabytes. I have two folders. One is a Lightroom folder that has all of my Lightroom files, including any backups that I may have made, my previews, and my Lightroom catalog. Do not mix those files with your photo files. These are all my photo files. So when I do an import, I name a folder for the shoot, and then if I click on this, you'll see that I also have corresponding names for all of the image files. This makes it really fast for me years from now to be able to go back in and find the actual shoot for these images. Okay, on the backup side of things, this is a spinning hard drive with higher capacity. I typically will store two years on one hard drive and then make a backup of that so I have redundancy. You can see I have 2018, 2019 here as a backup. If I ever want to go back in and look at any of those images, all I have to do is click on this, go into my Lightroom and go into my Lightroom catalog and it'll open it up as if I were working from my working library that maybe I used today or yesterday. Anyway, I have a mirror image here of my working library. So you can see I have a 2020 Lightroom folder with all of my Lightroom files. I have 2020 photos with all of my photo shoots. I will explain later in the video exactly when I take this folder from over here on my working library and I drag it over to my photos folder to back it up. There is a point in time in which I do that. It's usually after I cull everything out. And then if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I remap my Lightroom catalog so that it looks to my 2020 photos folder on my backup drive as if it was my working hard drive. Okay, let's move on to the next step where we're gonna do an import. So click on library, then go down to the left-hand corner and click on import. Okay, so I have put my camera memory card in the reader. Lightroom is going to automatically identify the pictures that are on it. If it doesn't, go ahead and click on the left-hand side there where it says EOS Digital. Yours may say something else. First thing I do is I go through and I scrub all of the images that are obviously not images, like blacks and misfires, anything along those lines. There's no point in storing all that, so I'm just going to scrub them out. Okay, after you're done scrubbing them out, this looks good. Next thing to talk about is this eject after import. If you have multiple shoots on one card, you might want them in different folders. So you'll want to uncheck this. I format my camera's memory card every single shoot, so I don't have this, uh, I don't have that problem. And so I'll leave mine checked and it'll kick the card out when I'm done with the import. My next suggestion is you treat this like reading a book. So across the top there, read from left to right. So we started over here, what are we importing? What are we doing to it? And then eventually, where do we want it to go? I copy as a DNG. I'd love to hear your thoughts below in the comment section if you do a copy as a DNG or you leave it as a raw file. Just know that if you copy as a DNG, it's going to take longer to do your import. Keeping with our theme of reading left to right, let's go over and tell Lightroom where we want the photos to be imported, where we want them to be stored pick other destination. Now, as I mentioned before, I have two folders here. One is going to be 2020 photos and the other one's going to be 2020 Lightroom. The photos is where you store the images. The Lightroom folder is where you store the Lightroom catalog. The two do not ever cross each other. So let's go ahead and click on new folder. Now here comes the trick. The new folder starts with the year, the month and the day. And then you pick something significant about the shoot. And if you're changing locations or you're on location, then you're gonna put the location at the very end. To new photographers and people that are new at Lightroom, this might not seem very significant, but what it does is it organizes every single one of your shoots into a chronological order by date. It also allows you to search by name. So inside of Lightroom, you can search by name. You can also see right here very quickly 
where all of your photos are. This file structure survives in Lightroom, as you'll see shortly. Most of my photo shoots happen in Sacramento, California, so I don't put that on my particular file structure, but certainly if I was in Mexico, Hawaii, traveling, maybe in LA, I would put that on the end so that I could search by it and I'd also know exactly where the location was. Okay, little workflow tip here. Highlight this and copy it. Now go ahead and hit create. After you hit create, it'll create that folder. We'll go ahead and choose that folder as the location. Okay, and staying with the theme of left to right, top to bottom, go ahead and click on file handling. I leave the build preview at standard. I don't use smart previews right now, although when I have an offsite editor, I do. Go ahead and leave checked the do not import suspected duplicates, that helps. And then I do not make a second copy, and I'll explain why shortly, but it has to do with saving yourself hard drive space. Okay, next, click on file renaming. This is probably the second most important thing outside of organizing your folders. We're gonna rename the file, and we're gonna custom name it, and we're gonna name it in sequence. Remember we scrubbed the images before we did the import. The reason why we're doing it in sequence is because now they'll all be named in a row and this one big black image will no longer be part of the numerical order. Remember that copy we did way back with the folder? Well, we're gonna use that name that we created for the folder and we're gonna copy it right in here in this custom text. What that's gonna do, it's gonna create a folder and it's gonna create a file with the same name. The difference is the image is gonna have a sequence number after it. So when you come across these images at some point later on, whether it be in a gallery or a print or whatever, you're gonna be able to go right back to that folder and find the whole group of other images. Last thing I wanna mention in this spot is the start number should be one unless you're shooting multiple cards, at which point you're going to make the start number whatever the last file number was of the previous card. So if you have card one, you're gonna start at one, you upload everything on that card, then you're gonna put in card two and you're gonna start wherever that card left off. Okay, I don't do anything with destination. I leave this alone. We've already determined where we want our images to go. And I'm going a little backwards here, but apply during import. If you have some things that you do regularly, like let's say you apply sharpening or you apply vibrance, clarity, something like that to every image that you import. And you might do that depending upon the profile that your camera is using. You can create a development setting or a preset here. And when you import, those things will be automatically applied to the images. Okay, so a quick recap. We're going to read like a book, left to right, top to bottom. Go ahead and double check your settings. Make sure everything is being imported from the proper card. You're doing the proper thing to the images when you're importing it. They're going to the proper place and you've renamed the images to the folder that you want to store them in. If everything looks good, go ahead to the bottom right hand corner and click import and you'll see that Lightroom will start a current import folder as well as putting these images into the folder that you specified initially during the import settings. Okay, don't worry here. There's nothing wrong with your computer. I am speeding up the video. Okay, the next step is going to be to cull all of the images where eyes are closed or the images in something you want. I call them the duh images. We're gonna scan through real quick and find those. Remember I said at the very beginning when I was importing that I did not do a second backup copy while I was importing? And this is why. I scan through all the images. Here's one right here. I don't want this one, so I'm gonna set it to be rejected. You can press X and it automatically flag it, or you can flag it with the black flag down at the bottom. So that will set it to be rejected. After I go through and I scan for everything else, I go up to library, I'm sorry, photo, go down to the very bottom, delete rejected photos and delete from disk. Now these are gone forever. So once you do this, they're gone. So I delete from disk, which when you do a lot of shoots and you have a lot of images, that's gonna save you a ton of hard drive space over the years. So one of the things we haven't talked about yet is backups. One of the nice things about this whole system is it's very easy to back up. And then once you close out a year, it's very easy to open your Lightroom catalog from that year and get to all of your images without having to remap anything 
or do anything special. So let's jump out to where we keep our files again. After I'm done with my import, I'll click on my working library disk, which is my SSD disk. You notice I have two folders down here at the bottom from today's shoot, and my backup folder does not have those yet. So before I erase my camera's memory cards, I will come in here and I will go ahead and grab the two folders from today's shoot and I will drag them over to my backup disk, which is my spinning hard drive, drop them in the 2020 photos folder, and you'll see that I'm now creating a backup. I have a rule here at the studio that we always have two copies of every image. So once this is copied over, I will be able to format my camera's memory card and get it ready for the next shoot. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is how we're gonna close out a year. In other words, we're gonna take the fast SSD drive and our working library from that SSD drive. And we're going to now close it out to just a backup drive. The reason that I do this is because I wanna use my fast SSD drive for the following year. And then I wanna be able to back up my backup so that I have a redundancy. But I also wanna be able to find those images and or just go to that drive, drop it in the dock, double click on Lightroom, and all of a sudden I'm working on 2016 or 2019, whatever it happens to be. Okay, so we're done copying. So we have identical 2020 Lightroom, 2020 photos from our working catalog, Lightroom catalog disc, which is our SSD drive. Over here to our spinning disc, which is the 2020 photo backup. I have a 2020 Lightroom, which is exactly the same as my working. So what I'm gonna do is from my backup disc, I'm going to double click on the Lightroom catalog. So very quickly, I want to show you that if you leave your working library drive in your dock, the Lightroom from your backup is just simply gonna go look for the photo files where it's used to finding them, which is on your SSD drive or your working library. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this Lightroom. I'm going to eject my working Lightroom catalog disc and I'm going to double click on my Lightroom catalog that is on my backup disc. Lightroom's gonna open again, only this time, you notice over here it can't find any of those files. It knows that it's trying to look for the files on photo 2TB, which is my SSD drive, which is my working Lightroom catalog drive, but it can't find them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remap these photos to my backup drive. I'm gonna do that by right clicking, tell it to find missing folder. Then I'm gonna go to my backup drive, which is my spinning hard drive. I'm gonna click on the 2020 photos folder, which has all of my backed up photos. And I'm going to choose. Now watch what happens over here to the two terabyte drive, our working library. It's going to go away and it's going to be replaced with our backup drive. So now what's happening is Lightroom is pointing to this this backup version of Lightroom is now pointing to the backup drive and the photos on the backup drive. As long as I don't change the name of the drive, Lightroom will be able to find these photos. So why is that cool? Because my backup drive now is completely self-contained. All I have to do is double click on the Lightroom folder and it is already mapped to all of the images for 2020. So let's say I wanna go to 2019. Everything for 2019, 2018 are on one drive, like I told you earlier. I changed my ways a little bit because I should have only two folders in this 2019 photo backup. But instead, I have all of my photo folders and my Lightroom folder mixed together. I had to individually map each one of these folders in order to get this to work. But if you follow the way that I just described in the video, you will be able to just double click on your Lightroom folder and everything will already be there. Literally, this is as if I was sitting here in 2019 working on this shoot as if it happened today.
So you can see that all of my folders with all of my photos are on the left hand side just like they would be normally. If you follow the naming scheme that I gave you at the very beginning of this video, you will be able to go to any of these folders and pick out a shoot. Let's say I want to go to Cabo. I'd love to go to Cabo. And I want to find all the images that I shot in Cabo. All I have to do is click on that folder and up pops everything that I shot in Cabo. One little piece of information, when you do that, Lightroom, if you go down here, Lightroom is going to try and open the last Lightroom catalog that you opened. So you'll need to reload your SSD drive with your current Lightroom catalog. Go to my Lightroom folder, double click on Lightroom, and up pops your current Lightroom catalog that uh, you've been working in in 2020. How fancy is that? Okay, so quick takeaway. You're gonna wanna organize your folders in an SSD drive, which is your fast drive, you're gonna have a Lightroom folder that has all your Lightroom files and a photos folder. The two don't mix like you saw I was doing in 2019. Then you're gonna have a backup, which is gonna be a spinning hard drive, and your backup is gonna have the same, a photos folder and a Lightroom folder. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. I would appreciate it if you'd hit the like button below and or subscribe to my channel if you wanna see some more of these tutorials. If you have comments about whether or not you convert to DNG or whether or not you like this video, you have questions or whatnot, please feel free to leave those below. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Until then, keep it simple.